not just a lost opportunity, it's extremely dangerous not to put up a challenge in this general election. I say that because the BNP are knocking at the door. The BNP have won their votes, not, not largely through former middle class voters, but have made gains in former labour areas, disenchanted workers, appealing to them on social issues and so on. The only way that we'll be able to counter this, or one of the ways, is to put forward an electoral alternative. In Germany, the left party has cut the ground from under the feet of the fascists or the, near, the far right in the elections there. It's not an end in itself. It's not a final answer to the problems which exist, the left party in Germany. The left party is even flirting with the ideas of coalitionism at the present time. But at the same time, it represents a point of reference. It represents a way forward for working people at this particular moment in time. Unless a socialist alternative is put forward, this crisis will wreak havoc in the lives of working people. And not just on the economic level. In Copenhagen, the world leaders are meeting to discuss the environment. The reality is there is no alternative. They can come up for you, the new generation, the next generation, that can begin to solve the problems of the environment. The capitalists are now a little bit like the 19th century capitalists when they feared typhoid in the working class areas. So they were compelled to take measures, not to protect working class people, but to protect themselves. So they live in this world and they make noises about the environment. But on the basis of capitalism, as Stan pointed out, the greatest failure of the market system is the economic and the environmental catastrophe that exists at the present time. The only solution to this problem, even Alistair Darling said, it would take what capitalism spent in the Great Depression and the Second World War to begin to address the problems. They're not going to do that. They're wreaking havoc with the world today. A loss of 5% of production in Britain forever. $10 trillion to bail out the banks internationally. Three quarters of the gross domestic product of the US is the price that we're paying for this economic catastrophe at the present time. That's why we reject this system. That's why we say the struggle on a day-to-day -day level must be organically connected now with the idea of socialism. What is socialism? It's a very simple idea. To take the power out of the hands of 150 monopolies that control 80 to 80 percent of the economy in Britain, of 500 companies worldwide, of 659 men predominantly who hold the power of this world in their hands, of three men who have as much wealth as 600 million of the most poverty-stricken workers and peasants in the neo-colonial world, and create a society that can unleash the talents and the abilities of ordinary working people, above all, can show a way forward to the young people who are condemned by this system. Socialism... <laughs> Socialism is not a grey, anemic world, as the ideologues of capitalism say. What a short-sighted attitude that is. A terrible world is the world that's being created by capitalism. And that's why we say unequivocally, we stand for socialism, for democracy. We reject the Stalinist model that fell in 1989. This is also, by the way, the anniversary of Trotsky's birth 130 years ago. And as Judy pointed out, I'm involved in a little contretemps with Robert Service. Not only would they refuse to debate here at socialism on the ideas of Trotsky, I was very polite in the letter in reply to his refusal to debate. And by the way, he said, I'm not debating with the Socialist Party that has a leader like Peter Tan, who's uh, got no skill, no ability, and so on and so forth, a leader for you to judge. We then said, OK, we'll debate with you in Moscow. Or for that matter, Judy Beeson will debate with you in Moscow. Any representative of the Socialist Party. He rejected that. So he said, OK, what about a good young Lincoln? He agreed to it when he knew I wasn't speaking. As soon as he heard that I wasn't speaking, he actually 
withdrew the invitation to speak in Moscow. You know, Trotsky once was the man who couldn't get a visa anywhere. The Socialist Party, it seems, exists in a world without debates. What are these gentlemen afraid of? They've got the whole of capitalist opinion with them. They've got the media. They've got big books, 600 pages long. It's Robert Service book. To Moscow, to Moscow, have a quick look. Home again, home again, write a big book. They've got everything going for them. Why can't they debate and discuss? And they accuse us of being undemocratic. They accuse us of wanting to create an undemocratic world. We will debate and discuss with the ideas that we put forward, the ideas of socialism, because they're the ideas of the future. 1989, the East German masses, when they turned out in what they described as the German Demonstrating Republic, the words of the GDR, when they came out in their millions, they were with the slogan, the people are coming. In 1789, the Saint-Colot marched to Versailles, and they said, tremble you tyrants, the people are coming. We say, this rally, the growth in the ideas of the Socialist Party and socialism in general, the growth of militant trade unionism means that the working class is coming. And this time, we will learn from the mistakes of the past. We will learn from the experiences of our generation. And this time, we will create socialism in the 21st century, which is the music of the future to transform the peoples of the globe.